everybody is talking about NFTs. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about this new sensation within the comic book collecting community and show off this recent grail that I purchased for myself, a Fantastic Four number one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, I'm gonna show off my recent purchase of a massive grail. That is right, I bought a Fantastic Four number one for myself, except that there's only one problem in that it's an NFT and not the actual comic book. So in this video, I'm going to show off my NFT purchase of a Fantastic Four number one, and then talk about this idea of NFT comic books. I mean, this is a massive, massive, you know, market. There's a, it's a new space. It's the wild west. Nobody knows what is going to happen with NFTs and nobody knows, especially what's going to happen with NFT comic books, but this is a new thing in the market. And I'm going to kind of dive in with you guys, uh, kind of show you what's going on. Uh, talk a little bit about it and then ultimately give you guys my thoughts. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things and I would appreciate it. All right, that said, uh, let's kind of slowly unpack this because there's a lot to talk about in this video. Um, so I guess the first thing I need to do is define an NFT in case you guys are watching this and you don't know what an NFT is. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a super long-winded explanation there's many other videos that can do a better job explaining NFTs, but just as a quick, quick, quick overview, an NFT is basically an acronym for non-fungible token, which essentially means that there is a digital marker on a particular asset that exists within the blockchain, which means that that asset cannot be duplicated. So uh, this has a lot of like kind of use cases that are being uh, uh, utilized now for pieces of art online, where digital art pieces can be NFTs and traded on open markets and people will know who actually owns that item. So this actually now applies to comic books where, you know, uh, before you could always buy a digital comic book, you know, on Marvel Unlimited or Comixology or whatever the case may be, but that comic book that you purchased essentially only sort of belonged to your account, you know, so to speak, but it didn't actually have a digital marker to your specific account. It only just was under the umbrella of your account. So now with NFTs, you can actually own a comic book. Like it is actually traceable on the blockchain that you own own this digital asset. So there's a new company out there in the market right now. It's called Vivi, V-E-V-E. -E -E. And they're basically the company that has the marketplace now for selling uh, licensed NFTs for properties like, you know, DC and Marvel. And just two weeks ago, they dropped their very, very first Marvel comic book. It's an official NFT comic book. Uh, they launched three of them. And since we've had that, you know, two week drop, they've actually had uh, two additional drops uh, for other comic books here in the marketplace. So I'm going to kind of show you guys what has been released, uh, you know, what the prices are for these things and, and how it all kind of works. So this is the company right here. This is called Vivi. Now this is their uh, splash page uh, for their, you know, uh, desktop website. But typically, you know, speaking, when you use uh, their service, you have to do this on a mobile device. So you can see, uh, welcome to the world of digital collectibles. They have it here on Google Play. You can get the app on the App Store. Um, I have this on my phone and I will actually, uh, you know, in the edit, I will show uh, me flipping through it because they don't have a desktop client, so I can't flip through it uh, in this means right here. Uh, but this is the website. So Vivi uh, is the official company uh, that has these IPs. I think that they are owned by a company called Aff Affinity and Affinity is sort of like a marketing company. Uh, uh, with some some big names, some heavy hitters that were essentially able to acquire the license for things like Marvel and DC, uh, amongst other properties. And this is kind of why they've kind of become the you know go-to uh, collectible uh, space for this type of IP. So they've basically been doing these drops for Marvel comic books. And this is uh, the first one that they did. This is on August 17th. So of course, you know, two weeks ago, and I'm just gonna kind of go through the article here with you guys and we can kind of take a look at this. So uh, Marvel Digital Comics, Mar Marvel's first ever limited edition digital comics drop on August 19th, uh, 20th and 21st at 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific time only on the VV, iOS and Android app. So this of course already happened and they launched three uh, comic books 
folks at the start here. So you can see that they launched a Marvel Comics uh, number one. This is, of course, the uh, first appearance of the Human Torch, the uh, James Hammond version of the Human Torch. And also, I believe this is the second appearance of Namor the Submariner, uh, you know, because they had the reprint of weekly, of the weekly Funnies comics. Uh, here where they also released a Journey into Mystery 85. This is the first appearance of Loki. And they also released a Fantastic Four number one, first appearance of the Fantastic Four. The first offering in Vivi's digital comic uh, range kicks off with a bang, uh, offering Marvel's earliest and in some cases most rare comic books. Starting with the original, the OG, the foundation on which all other Marvel comic books followed, Marvel Comics number one. So it was kind of fitting that they released Marvel Comics one as the first NFT. Uh, this is followed by Journey to Mystery 85 and then um, also Fantastic Four number one. So uh, this is really interesting because I, I kind of want to show you guys what they decided to do here with these comic books and how they decided to release them because you know they didn't just release the comic book as is, they actually are doing variant editions of these things. And that, of course, is, you know, as you guys know, uh, from variant covers, that is sort of uh, uh, pushing the demand side to this sort of equation. You know, it's the rare variant stuff that right now uh, people in the NFT market are hunting. So here you see they have like five different covers that they're sort of releasing for Marvel Comics number one. And this is what I think is also very interesting is that, you know, they actually do have the pop counts for this thing. So let's kind of read over this. Marvel Comics number one, the first ever Marvel comic, the one that started it all in 1939. Uh, the Marvel series Big, Big Bang and the kick kicks off with an explosion as the android human torch in his first appearance collides with Namor the Su Submariner. Also his first appearance, uh, they, they bill it as that, but we'll see. Uh, this is the first comic book ever published by Marvel, then known as Timely Comics. So the list price for this, when you when you buy these NFTs, essentially you have to get into a queue uh, and hopefully you can make a purchase. And if you make a purchase, uh, it would cost you $7 right there as the list price. So $7 to buy this thing. And then when you open up your uh, you know comic book, you have a rare, you have a small chance to get one of the rare covers on, on the book. So uh, you you, know, you buy this for seven dollars. Uh, there are five variant covers. There is sixty thousand total copies of this thing that they're releasing. So classic cover. They have common forty-eight thousand are the classic cover. They have a what is called a vintage variant. This is an uncommon six thousand copies of that. They have a hero variant, which is a rare three thousand copies of that. They have a vibranium variant, which is an ultra rare twenty-four hundred copies, and they have a true believer variant, which is a secret rare and only six hundred copies of that. So you would go in, you would buy this for $7 and essentially you would have a 1% chance to get the secret rare variant edition of that. And as you can see here from the images, uh, this right here is the main cover. This is the common, I believe it is here right here where the, um, the comic is in black and white, but the title is in color. This is the uncommon right here where they have the uh, comic in black and white, but the character in color. This is the rare. Uh, this full black and white is the ultra rare. And then this cover right here that you see, this is the secret variant uh, cover that is the you know uh, rarest of the rare. So that, that was Marvel Comics number one. Then they came out with Journey into Mystery 85. They did the same thing here, except there's only uh, 50,000 uh, editions of this that came out. And then lastly, on the weekend, they did Fantastic Four number one, uh, which also had 60,000 copies uh, at the launch of the comic book. And this is the one that I actually bought for myself. And I actually did buy the hero variants, the rare one for 3,000, uh, th th where there's only 3,000 uh, copies of this one. And I will get into why I felt like I wanted to purchase that one later on in the video. Additionally, later on in the week, they would release their second drop. This was about a week later on August 24th, 25th, and 26th. Uh, they did three comic books, except they didn't go with like, you know, the old school stuff, the Silver Age stuff. They went with modern stuff here, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, they launched a New Mutants 98, of course, a first appearance of Deadpool, same sort of thing, $7 uh, purchase. And of course, all of these uh, various covers uh, come out for it. They did a House of X. And this one is really interesting because, you know, unlike the, you know, other comics here, where they basically just made things black and white. Uh, they actually did do uh, the kind of current variant covers for this one, uh, for the House of X, which I, you know, I'm actually not sure if these are variant covers that exist in, you know, um, analog versions of these comic books, or if this is specific to Vivi, uh, you guys can let me know, but here are the five covers you can get for House of X. And then the last one here, they released the Marvels one. This was like, I believe Alex Ross had done these covers and they also had uh, five different covers for the Marvels here. And then the most recent drop that they had just the other day is Amazing Spider-Man number one. They just did this one by itself. Uh, of course, this is the first 
issue within the Spider-Man series, second appearance of Spider-Man, first appearance of the Chameleon, John John and Jameson, uh, characters like that. And here they have the five colors, which of course, this is the common. This is the uncommon, where it's just the red title. Here is the rare, which uh, has, you know, Spider-Man and the characters in color. Here is the ultra rare, which is just full black and white. And here is the secret rare, which is, I do believe, is a panel within this comic book uh, that they then just made the cover for the secret rare variant. On top of comic books, of course, they have other things just in case you guys are interested. Uh, they did have some, you know, DC stuff. They launched a uh, a 3D Superman that essentially, you know, think of it like a statue. You can have this, uh, you can own this statue right here. It's just one pose. Uh, and they dropped a, let's see, 8,000 copies of this one. Uh, and their list price was $50. So you'd have to purchase it for 50. Uh, currently, this, this uh, statue actually on the marketplace is being sold for, you know, 350, you know, on the secondary market. So this one has sort of appreciated in value since its release just a couple weeks ago. Uh, additionally, they released a Captain America uh, statue, Series 1 here, uh, and they did five different versions of the statue. Uh, the, the most common one is just this statue right here. It's just a pose. Uh, the, then you have the uncommon, which is this other pose right here. You have the rare, which is the classic punching red skull pose. And then you have the ultra rare, which actually this one does an animation where you can see that he salutes salutes right there. And then they have the super rare, which is this uh, one where he also does another animation where he kind of jumps down. And I will show you guys this kind of later on in the video. Uh, but of course, the two ones that are animated, this one and this one, are the current most expensive on the market. Uh, additionally, they did a Spider-Man one. So again, like the uh, Captain America one, they have just three that are just normal poses. And then they have two that have the kind of rare animation embedded in them. But this is super interesting. I mean, as we kind of, you know, unpack what is going on here in this space. I mean, definitely I feel like a lot of this is highly speculative. People thinking that, you know, NFTs are the future. And I think, you know, for the most part, they are going to play a major role in future collectibles, you know, in this marketplace. It's just the question is, are these versions of the NFTs actually going to hold some kind of value later on down the line? Or is this sort of like, you know, just where people are doing the, the test runs of things and then who knows what NFTs actually actually grow into uh, eventually, or at least the ones that actually become valuable in the future. It's hard to really say with this, but uh, it's interesting because, you know, with the release of some of those rare comic books, uh, you know, some of those secret rares I see currently being sold right now on the marketplace for around $4,000, $5,000. So can you imagine uh, buying an NFT for say, like a, uh, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 1 for $4,000, which is basically a price that could get you a low grade version of the actual comic book. Uh, so that is actually really crazy that people are chasing this stuff in that kind of way. And here's the ultimate kicker in terms of it being a highly speculative, you know, hot thing right now is that these drops, when they release these comic books out into the market, have been selling within, you know, 60 seconds or like, you know, two minutes. That's how fast these things are selling out. You know, everybody is chasing those ultra rare, secret rare variant comic book versions. And I would assume that they're all hoping to be able to flip it on the secondary market uh, and be able to cash in, you know, they're, they're essentially, they're going from seven a $7 purchase of a drop, you know, hoping to get lucky. Maybe they have that 1% chance of getting lucky and then they're able to, you know, flip it for whatever, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 uh, on the secondary market and essentially, you know, make 100X on their investment. But for the sake of the channel, I did decide to take the plunge and buy one of these NFT comic books for myself. I did purchase actually one of the hero variants because I felt like, uh, you know, maybe maybe I'll get one of the, the more rare ones and hopefully it can appreciate in some kind of value if this thing is a real thing. So I'm now going to, you know, cut over to my uh, iOS device and I'll kind of guide you through uh, the interface in case you guys want to see what it looks like. All right, so here we are in the VV app. There you can see my Fantastic Four number one. That is the hero variant, uh, which basically means that it has the characters in color on the cover. And you can see when I click on it, it just kind of tells you a little bit about the comic book, um, has the plot summary. You can see there, there's the five covers. And then here it says, owner Swagglehoss edition uh, 59,000. 
296. Of course, there were 60,000 total copies that came out for this, and I believe only 3,000 for the one I own. You can read the comic book. You can sell the comic book. Uh, reading the comic book looks just like this. It's just like Marvel Unlimited or Comixology. Uh, if you want to flip through it, of course, you can see it. Looks exactly the same. Additionally here, if you want, you can have your collectibles in this kind of showroom that they have on their app, which is, you know, really, really basic, but I guess it's kind of cool. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot have your comic books in here, which I thought was really disappointing. I would have liked to have a wall that I could hang my comic books. But if you own one of those statues I showed off earlier in the video, like say the Superman or the Spider-Man one, uh, you can put them in this room and, you know, kind of like an art gallery or a museum. Uh, you have your vault here and you can kind of just show them off. Uh, here we see the marketplace. Uh, this is if you want to buy one of these comic books. Uh, you can see there's quite a few being sold for this ASM one. This is the common one. You can get one for $10. Currently, you can see the gem value right there. There's also live action auctions. Uh, so, you know, who knows what these will end up selling for, but, you know, there's ones as low as $1 bids right now, uh, but they don't end for a few days. And then you can scroll down and kind of look at the rest of the, the covers. Uh, which here is the uh, ultra rare for Fantastic Four. You can see this one being sold for $68. Um, additionally, they have the ASM. This is the secret rare. So you can see right there, $1,700 would be the lowest you could buy this one for. Uh, and then there's a live auction bid going on right now, $752 for the live action bid. And I believe that, you know, there's 25 bids on this. Yeah, 25 bids. So uh, someone is 100% going to be paying at least $752 for this comic book right here with that cover. Uh, and then just kind of flip through a few more here. Uh, let me see if I can find the Fantastic Four uh, Secret Rare. Yeah, so this is the most uh, rarest edition of the Fantastic Four that I have. And there you can see $1,200 is the buy it now for this thing uh, compared to my $30 that I spent. Uh, there's also some live auctions going on, uh, $1,700 but no bids for this one. So, you know, let, let's say that the, the true value of this comic right now is around $1,279 actually uh, if you wanted to make this purchase. Uh, it could be yours and you can have it in your collection and be the owner of a Fantastic Fantastic Four number one. Well, hopefully you guys kind of found that helpful. That is me showing off these sort of digital NFT comic books on the VV app. Uh, here you see right here, that is my Fantastic Four number one that I am the proud owner for. Uh, there it is in my account. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with this thing. Uh, I'm going to actually hold on to this uh, at least through, like, let's just say, you know, rumors of when, you know, Fantastic Four casting is announced, or maybe we're going to get a trailer next year, or maybe, you know, uh, you know, when the Fantastic Four movie is going to come out. And I'm actually going to, you know, pay attention to the value of this thing. And I'll report back to you guys, like what the value of, you know, these NFT comic books um, are doing. Are they holding their value? Maybe only the rare ones hold their value. If it's anything like NBA Top Shot, uh, the, the rare moments for NBA Top Shot are actually still extremely expensive compared to like the common moments. So that's definitely interesting as a comparison to think about. Uh, but, you know, as we get into this like NFT digital comic space, you know, I, I know that, you know, we are probably going to be a little bit more boomer about it. You know, we like our sort of tactile comic book uh, feeling that, that we're used to. We like to, you know, all the, the senses of smelling it and holding it, etc. cetera. Uh, but I, I'm not sure that, you know, I would totally dismiss NFT comic books as not being the thing of the, of the future. I actually think that for digital comic books, uh, there's a lot of use cases with this. You know, one of the issues with digital comic books, uh, you know, on Comicology or Marvel Unlimited, uh, yes, they're nice to read, but there's no collectability in them because, you know, once you buy, I mean, you can buy it and there's like, infinite copies that exist. But I feel like if new comic books start to have NFTs to where there's like a an established print run of a certain amount of new, say, whatever, uh, new Donny Cates Venom comic book, um, I actually think that there will be, you know, a, a subset of people that, you know, value the collectability of it. And those might actually make some of those uh, digital comic books uh, be, you know, uh, on, on par with some of the, um, the analog comic books that we also sort of collect. So I really do think that NFT are going to be a thing of the future. I do think that there is a space for NFT comic books to be a thing in the future. Um, whether or not this is the iteration that is going to be the one that actually holds value, uh, say 20 years from now, I'm not so sure about that. But it's you know kind of a fun gag thing to 
keep an eye on for right now and we'll see how you know this shapes out in the future. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about NFT comic books? Uh, there's definitely a lot more to unpack with this uh, topic, a lot more to discuss within uh, you know how it affects the hobby. Uh, anyways, let me know what you guys think. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content and I will see you in the next video.